We'll now hear from Karen Lewis, the outspoken president of the Chicago Teachers Union, on the issues she wanted to address had she run for mayor of Chicago. I'm going to work strongly with the city council to encourage um, participatory budgeting, participatory democracy on every single ward down to the block if at all possible. I mean, it's just that those are the things that we have to do to move this city forward. We are going to have to change the political landscape. It's going to have to look differently. It's going to have to feel differently. But what it's going to be more than anything else is that people start to feel empowered and part of the process. What I see throughout this country is more and more and more voter suppression. But don't be fooled and think it's just in the South. It's everywhere. It's here too. People want people to not be engaged in the political process. How do we change that? We change it by electing people who are committed to democracy, are unabashedly, outwardly, outspoken about that, and place demands on them. So, the question is, what is our responsibility as residents of this city to do? And our major responsibilities are to find candidates who believe in what we believe in. Participatory democracy requires work. This is not about one single election. This is about building a political infrastructure that resembles everyone and that speaks to everyone. So what I'm hoping is that people here are committed to a participatory democracy and that people here are committed to things like an elected representative school board. And this is about changing the political infrastructure and if you're down for that, I think that you're someone who would vote for someone like me if I would choose to run. <laughs> Unfortunately, what we've been handed by corporate sponsors is this notion that our children can't learn unless they are being tamed, okay? Unless they have been put in a, um, uh, an invisible straitjacket, unless they are quiet and compliant. That is not an education. That is training for low-wage jobs that these people plan to have for our children. And these are something that we've been talking about for some time. A financial transaction tax on the South Street, or the South Street tax, would generate for the state anywhere from 10 to 20 billion dollars. That kind of wipes out all the deficits that we would have. But there's a lot of pushback against it. There's also a national financial transaction tax that's being looked at. But again, the people that control the donor class also are the ones who are pushing back against this. The, the key to this is that at some point, when does austerity stop for the rest of us? When does that stop? I mean, are, are, are we just going to continue to go to the well with red light cameras and other kinds of regressive taxation that we already have, as opposed to looking at something infinitely more progressive? So we've been talking about that. We are going to have to find some creative solutions to the lack of revenue that is coming into this city, into the state. We cannot continue to do the stuff that we've been doing all along. That's not solving the problem. My dearest friend in the entire world is a psychiatrist. And we have these conversations all the time about how important it is to have access to quality mental health care. And, and, and that's another issue around equity, that you know, there are children who, for example, their parents have a big fight, they can go to therapy right away. 
You know, we have children who are suffering from PTSD who have seen some really horrible things and they don't have access to mental health care. Command and control doesn't work because the people that you're supposed to be commanding and controlling have no voice, then they have no way to implement your policy. Because, it, especially if they don't believe in it. We have to have a real discussion around how the budgets work. So for each department, so for example, like CPS, when, instead of them just coming up with a budget and saying, here it is, and giving people basically 24 hours to comment on it, why couldn't we be a part of the process of putting the budget together in the first place? First of all, young people need something to do. Period. They need something to do. Um, a dear friend of mine used to say, you know, you have to have three things in life. You have to have something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to. And this is that we have also failed to mentor the next generation appropriately. You know, I hear about mentoring, but mentoring cannot just be haphazard. You're lucky to get a mentor, you know? These are the kinds of things that we have to seriously consider. Again, how do we decide what our priorities are? But I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but access to the trades are extremely important for our youth. We have a police force that is highly demoralized, okay? So I know people don't like to say, oh, more cops. That is not a solution. Hiring more cops gives us the opportunity to do several things. Number one, when our statistics and when our city was the safest, we had the strongest community policing program going. So look at the statistics. That's when we had the least amount of uproar. I am for establishing relationships between the police department, our community organizations, where youth and police talk to each other, have conversations, build respect. This is about also developing relationships. So please, do not put me in the same category because I've said we need to hire more police because we need rested police officers too. Understand that's my issue. Not just putting folks on the street to like be a wave because that's not how crime gets solved. It's not. The problem is what we've got right now are people who fetishize technology. No camera came down off of a pole and stopped an altercation. No camera will ever do that. The whole purpose of TIPS was designed to help blighted communities, right? It was designed, but we've gotten to the point now where the only place we're seeing TIPS used are in places that probably don't need them. But now we've got people who have gotten used to the fact that this is what they're going to have access to. So I think that when the community responds to these kinds of projects, then things get changed. But things don't get changed if all the deals are made behind closed doors before the discussion's ever had. What I will say to you is that I'm more interested in addition than I am in subtraction. So to me, addition means bringing more people to the problem, bringing more ideas to the problem, and, and having creative ways of solving them. That you can't do by just saying, okay, I'm gonna take your money from here and give it over there, right? Because if people are like, uh-uh, you know, that's, I don't know, what do they say? That's socialism, that's communism, that's something. Whatever, they, whatever ism they're into this week. So the issue becomes, how do we provide incentives for people to want to do the right thing, is what, comes, what this comes down to. How do we make the space positive for those things to happen? And it happens from addition, again, not subtraction.
Hi, I'm Vermin Supreme, and whenever I'm watching some sort of moving images on a screen, it's indie media for sure.